Hello class, I'm Mr. And I will be teaching you Meat and Bones 101. Now I'm obviously the most qualified teacher for Meat and Bones 101 because I'm the one who created it. Now, lesson one, today we will be covering connections and histories to get you caught up on what's happened before, what's happened current, and not what will be happening, because that's not history. That's prediction. Now, this obviously isn't traditional history because it is not linear, but history nonetheless, because I'm going to tell you what has happened. Now, this course comes in four parts, and we will start with chapter one. The beginning, Waston. Now, it all starts right here, in the neighborhood of TM. Now, it'd be good to remember that at this time, the only two people that were in the neighborhood were myself and Mr. Meat and Bones. And it's about what he did that is the catalyst to this whole course, right? So it wouldn't be called Meat and Bones 101. So, in the neighborhood, there is a mine that is very far to the west, right? And in that mine, there is an ore called Waston. Yes, you heard me correctly. It's called Waston. Waston. It is the most durable metal that has ever been found. Trust me. Don't look it up. And with that, it comes with very good qualities. Now, me and M, right? We were like, hey, we could do a lot of stuff with this metal. Right? What happens if we make it into stuff? Now, this metal right here if you melt it down and blacksmith it and make it into stuff these things will have random things about them that are different than any other thing right we made a sword that sword literally just fucking i forget but i do remember the name it was called the the forget me blade Oh, that's probably what it did. So the point is, Waston, very important mineral resource thingy that me and, me and M found, gives strange properties to things, right? Now, we got that down. Now, me and M, we thought, hey, so we made a sword, makes people forget things. That's pretty cool, right? We made a mace once, and it made people uh, grow more limbs. It was, it was very weird. Like, I had a third arm for, I think, a year before we figured out how to make the limb gun. Right, so, we figured out how to make a sword that can make people forget stuff, a mace that makes people grow limbs, a gun that makes people lose limbs. That was very convenient. But the point is, we were like, well, this is what weapons do. Weapons do things, right? But what if we make household items and stuff like that? Which is what led us to think to make a door. Now this door, as you may have guessed since it's made of Waston, not an ordinary door. If any of you have seen uh, Howl's Moving Castle, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is a door that had a little dial next to it, right? That had, like, there's a little dot, right? A little dial next to it that had four quadrants. And those four quadrants, we now know, are 1450, the 80s, the after, and New York 2. Now, this is important for your notes. This is the creation. Can anyone tell me? No? Okay, cool. This was the creation of the branch door. TM. Now the branch door allowed me and M access from the neighborhood TM to 1450 80s after and New York 2. And from there, things got pretty fucking wacky, gonna be completely honest. And that concludes chapter one, the beginning. Lost.
right? And so now we'll move on to chapter two, branching out. So this part of the lesson involves four quadrants that we have to cover. Those four quadrants, yes, you guessed it, are the different branches that the branch door branches out to, right? Branch. And to cover these four, we will have to go into sub-chapters of this chapter. First, we will start with 1450. And before you ask, no, none of the four branches connect in any way linearly through time. No, they're all separate dimensions with their own separate histories. Now, as you may know, in your reality, which is the dimension that you're watching this from, 1450 was a year, and things happened in that year, right? But this is not human dimension 1450. This isn't reality 1450. This is a different dimension 1450. So get it out of your head that it's the same. It's not. The point is, human history up until 1450 was relatively the same, except for one difference. Moisturizer demons. Moisturizer demons plagued every night of 1450. Sucked ass, from what I heard. I was in the neighborhood, as you know. Moisturizer demons are evil, evil, and just plain up, like, really mean. They usually only come out at night, and they start coming out at sunset, kind of like volatiles from Dying Light. Yeah, it's like that. But the only way to defeat them, as the name might suggest, is moisturizer and candle wax. That's why candle shops are such a hot commodity in 1450. But later in 1450, around 1450s... I want to say August, no one wrote anything down. No one wrote anything down. I'm ballparking based off of like things I've heard. I could have asked this to people, but don't know if you noticed, but most of the people in 1450 aren't very educated. So the point is, around August of 1450, King Tom sealed away the moisturizer demons. And they were sealed away for what everyone hoped was forever. Now. This isn't the only difference that 1450 has to other dimensions. The other notable difference would be the appearance of people such as King Tom, right? This wasn't a history person in 1450 in your dimension, right? Or Charles Knightley. You probably would have heard of a guy who ran a news station in 1450, right? And fucking Patron. We'll get to Patron. Actually, no, we'll get to him right now. Patron de la Vive Carter was born in 2040... No, okay. 2401. Quite a ways in the future, right? And he was a genius. Modern Tesla. He's type. He's like a Dr. Emmett Brown type deal, right? And I mean that literally, because he invented a time machine. And using that time machine, he, as you might have guessed, went back to 1450, because he didn't enjoy the chapter about King Tom in high school. So he plotted to assassinate him. Patron planned to assassinate King Tom, right? And take his place as the person on the throne. But before he could do that, he met Charles Knightley, whom he fell in love with. But Charles, in, obviously Charles was in a good position because of King Tom's reign. He was in a good position as a knight, and so Patron couldn't bring himself to assassinate King Tom. Clearly, because history hasn't been fucked up like Back to the Future style. He, Patron hasn't disappeared or some shit. Point is, Charles and Patron's love saved King Tom from dying and saved the universe from space-time continuum collapse, whatever, you know? Time travel's weird. As you heard from the Moisturizer Demon section, King Tom played a very vital role in the death, uh, not the death, the banishment of the Moisturizer Demons, right? That's basically his main contribution to history. He was basically just an ass the asshole feudal leader, right? But uh, m the most curious case, 1450, is Charles... Celsior Knightley. Charles Knightley, in 1450, became the first ever news anchor that wasn't biased. And the only news anchor since then. And little did I tell you, 1450, when the branch door showed up in 1450, they were a bit mad at us. Because, you know, witchcraft and whatever, right? 
They're annoyed because they suck. I'll be completely honest, everyone from 1450 usually sucks, except for Red Boy, Grindleberry, you know, people that you see. But the point is, Charles, being the news anchor that he is, breaking new ground and etc., he convinced everyone in 1450 to be chill with us from the neighborhood. And so Charles Excelsior Knightley became the ambassador for 1450 in the neighborhood. That is basically all we have for this subject, subset, uh, subsection of this chapter about 1450. Obviously, if you go to 1450, don't tell anyone how they die. That's not how it works. Have you not watched Back to the Future? The point is, don't tell them. So, um, we'll move on to the 80s. Now, not much really goes on in the 80s, except for hijinks, smoking, pizza, stuff like that, right? But the 80s itself might not be interesting in this dimension. But four people from the 80s are very interesting. We have... Gene Pants, the first interdimensional news host. Kurt Austin, we got a game show host from the 80s, who now, both of these two, reside in the neighborhood, and they run basically most of entertainment. So these two huge entertainment moguls came from the 80s, and now reside in the neighborhood. Now, the two other ones are Amanda Stroganoff and Chaz Jackson. These two entertain models in their own right. Chaz Jackson makes movies, books, just a jack of all trades, really. And Amanda Stroganoff makes rap music, stuff like that, etc., right? And also, notably, PJ Smoothies. But PJ Smoothies is way less known than these two. They also currently reside going in and out of the 80s and the neighborhood. That is basically most of the interesting parts of the 80s. But the 80s, as in its core, is the entertainment center of the branch. Now that ends subsection 2B of chapter 2. Now we will get into the more lore-heavy subsections. Starting with New York 2. Now, as you know, New York 2 is a, is a town, it's not a time. So, the best way to detail the history and what goes on in New York 2 is through a geographical map. Now, in this dimension, New York was the city, not the state. New York was liberated in around 1995 by a group of New York separatists in, in America. They demolished any military that came to thwart their plans of liberation. So, New York is now its own country, known as New York 2. Now, this country has a bit of... not... Is, is, it's not in good shape at the moment. As you may have guessed, it doesn't have a very good government system, which means it doesn't have a very good military. But, if they all band together, they could take out anyone. The closest they have to a government is up in the northeast corner with Dan Matthews precinct. That is the closest they have to a government. It's basically what is left of the police in New York who fought for the liberation and they aren't bastards because they, because they don't work for a system. They're basically like vigilantes because they don't work for a government. They're like vigilante cops. Pretty cool. Now, of course, to protect civilians that are coming in New York, everyone in New York has decided on tourist gapway. This lane, if you will, is called a tourist gapway because tourists are allowed being in there and they this is like peaceful sanctioned areas, right? Where it's like, oh, tourists can be here and they won't get attacked by any gangs. That's guaranteed. Now, right here is the system. Giant mecha conglomerate, corporate conglomerate that's like big hive mind kind of thing. You get it. You know, you, know, you get it. Up here is Ruffian's turf. As you know, Ruffian is a man who holds unquestionable power and he holds the entire northwest corner of New York 2 all to himself. Anyone he finds in there, 
gets back to the bat. Now, the Masquerade Mafia is one of the most prolific gangs in New York, too. In fact, they control a giant amount of land down near the bottom. They hold an immense amount of power, like the Italian Mafia in Chicago or Miami and stuff like that, you know? The Masquerade Mafia is something to watch out for, but... If you would like my honest opinion, someone that you should look out for the most, other than ruffian, uh, would be the White Glove Society. The White Glove Society is a group of rich individuals who reside in the center of New York, too. And they hold unquestionable power, and they are cannibals, obviously. They don't hide it very well. The Masquerade Mafia also has some territory up in the Northeast, as you can see right there. Now, these areas are in constant battlefield, no man's lands, if you will, right? Obviously, people can go in and out of that, as you've seen with a back alley interaction, and uh, Murder Law Incorporated, and the Riddle Room. All these take place normally in these. If it has something to do with the Masquerade Mafia, it's either here or here. White Club Society is probably here, and System, and Ruffian, and Dan Matthews. You get the gist. The point is, New York 2 is a city that is bound by gang violence. It is honestly pretty sad, but for the most part, they mostly just mortally wound each other. Like, no one's died there for a couple years, actually. It's pretty surprising. Actually, no. A lot of people have died there. A lot of people die there. So, although it is a great tourist attraction, in, in the tourist gapway right here, they moved to Times Square, so you can still go to Times Square. That's pretty cool. Now, each of these respective gangs has its own history, but I'm not going to go into a subsection of a subsection in this episode of A Short History Lesson. So, we will have to cover that in, on a later date if you want that to be a thing. That basically covers our New York 2 section. Now we'll move on to, in my opinion, probably the most lore-heavy section of the branch. The after. Now the after is quite a an ordeal. So, from what I can tell, from the amount of time that we've all been connected through the branch, uh, the, the after is an alternate universe 1450 in a way. Like, 1450 was in the past, right? Now, just take all of the events that happened in 1450 and then just put them in a history book and then in the future, the after happens. But, don't be mistaken. In the dimension that we have 1450 in, the after does not come in the future. Or at least we don't know that yet. The point is, the after is in its own dimension separate from 1450. 1450, as we know it, is not connected to the after in a linear time way. Although, everything that happens in 1450, term, in terms of historical events, historical people, that all did happen in the past of the after. Now, where the after really kicks off is where we, when we come to the election of a Park D. G. Jolings. The president of the free world. Now, Park D.G. Jolings was the president of the free world around 2008. Right? And in 2008, shit went down. I will be completely honest. Also, everyone wondering, yes, Obama was president. He just was president earlier. Because... These universes are a lot more progressive than yours. 2008 was the climactic point of the greatest war. Now, people call World War I the Great War. Well, this is the greatest war. Oh, fuck. Well, this is the greatest war. And, yeah. And in the greatest war, everyone was pointing nukes at everyone else. And that wasn't a fun time, from what I heard. I read it in a book. Right? So, Park D.G. Jolings, P.D. 
g j thought it best which is idiotic to press the big red button and that big red button does exactly what you thought it would and the world ended basically so park's dead as you may have guessed <laughs> and thus that leads us to the after that we all know and tolerate now the importance of the fact that 1450 in this dimension was connected to the after in this dimension is that in activating all those nukes it released the moisturizer demons so yes they are a problem now again but the main issue in the after at the moment is civil unrest among those that survived the atomic war everyone is conflicting with everyone else's views where did you go tell me oh, okay sorry I no it's completely fine i was in a pause anyway and that is when the great election happened as you all saw it's currently happening actually the election is happening right now as you can tell that is a result of the civil unrest now this civil unrest also gave birth to the coalition of the after which put together the election which, as you know, is currently happening, so I can't really report on much. Now, if we're to talk about notable people in the after, we would be looking at the candidates for the election, which are Ein Kri. Ein Kri is a, a fascist, let's be completely honest, who takes a lot after a certain A.D. Wait, A.D., A.H., I'm a fucking idiot. Wait. Yeah, A.H., whatever, whatever. Ein Krieg, fascist, right? Then Sine Nomine, anarcho-communist, and then this guy probably doesn't know where he is, and then Connor Black, he's just a Republican. So the point is, these are our candidates. Fascism, anarcho-communism, just kind of chill out. And, 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 uh, you get it. I don't like politics. They're boring. So the point is, the after is a world where there is atomic fallout leading to an election, leading to just a bunch of other shit. And, like, demons out of caves and other stuff, and experiments and stuff like that. So, that concludes this subsection of Chapter 2, which also concludes chapter two as a whole. Now we will move on to chapter three. And this is the last chapter. I said four earlier, but I was wrong. Consequences. Now, in chapter three, we will cover the consequences of chapter one. Chapter one, we melted down Waston. If you will all remember, because you probably all wrote it in your notes if you're taking fucking notes, like I told you to. So the point is, we melted down Waston. But the bad thing that comes with that is that Waston generates a nuclear toxic thing, waste, uh, it's actually not even nuclear or toxic, it's just weird waste. Weird waste. It doesn't have any effect on people, but it takes up a lot of space and we need to get rid of it. It also comes in a liquid form. <laughs> so the point is, we had to get rid of this liquid waste, which led to the great leakage, which means that we just leaked the wa- the wa- okay, so. The Waston was kept in a, what we thought was a, was a good containment facility, right here. Containment facility. That's where the Waston was, and that's where it was being kept, right? But, it melted through the floor, and now it's in a different dimension. And we don't know where it went. Someone's talking about, like, a red herring or something, but I don't fucking know why they're doing it. But the point is, that's where the Waston went, and that's a bad consequence, because we don't know what it's doing in there. <gasps> then, other than the Waston leak leakage, other than the Waston le other than the Waston leakage, um, there are a couple other consequences. For one, the neighborhood, TM, we have a maintenance tunnel to your reality. Maintenance tunnel. Kind of like the back rooms that are all over the internet, but there's actually an ending. It's like a maze, but we have a map of it, and, like, it's pretty cool. Recently, someone got outside, and we don't know where they went. And that's not good, because, like, I don't know what someone from this dimension being in reality could do to that reality. It could tear it apart. 
for all I know. I don't fucking know. Point is, it's probably not good. And then also, one day, after we made the branch door, a fucking metro station appeared. A metro station in the neighborhood appeared. Which led to this weird uh, universe that they called tinfoil sandwiches. Which uh, some people from the branch door area went through the neighborhood to this to this universe, and now they're residing there. Some are hunting ghosts, some are doing news videos, and we also learned that, uh, and we also learned that in part with the neighborhood, right? Another metro station is connected to that universe that leads to something called Void Participant, which we still haven't gone to yet, but it seems interesting, and um, they're also a part of this one. Right? So, the point is, the branch door had severe consequences for the neighborhood. Right? Also, if you're wondering about that guy, don't worry. We're sending someone to get him. Don't worry. Now, now a couple years ago, a certain group of three men, well, actually just three people, I actually don't know if they're dudes. I don't know why I said men. Other than all that, three years ago, a group of three people found the lost in storage, and they were imbued with the powers of time, space, and existence. Now, as you... And actually, there was four people. Now, as you may have guessed, this one is Time Cop, who appears in Time Quest. If you couldn't have gathered that. This one is a man named Space Crusader. And we still haven't found this one. We still haven't found the one imbued with existence, but we have a read on these two. So that's another consequence. And with them, they've been tampering with B squared's realms, which are at the edge of time and space, and that's also been messing with Father Time. He's been having a weird senile daydream for the re for the entirety of his old age, and it's been really weird. And yeah, so that concludes lesson one of connections. That concludes lesson one of Meat and Bones 101, which is connections and history. I hope you took notes and stuff, and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.